Thank you very much. That's Ken Corlin. <coughs> I welcome the motion here today from the technical group and welcome their commitment to what is a clear priority for the new government and contained in the programme for government. Unfortunately, the technical group's big idea is to turn the doll into a collection of independence. They want us all to be recreated into their own image and likeness, and they want to abolish the political party system. But I have to tell them that politics is a serious business, and representative democracy requires teamwork and requires policies and collective action. Independence, of course, by their nature, they're individual politicians. Uh, they are something of a political luxury that a parliament can tolerate and a parliament can accommodate, but there is no parliament composed entirely um, or in part of, of independence that could function effectively, as Deputy Stagg has clearly pointed out. Ironically, too, the independents have recognised the contradictions in their own status. They now combine in a technical group, which, you know, is not that far from a party. So for all practical purposes, to become a political grouping for the purpose of the Dáil, uh, and they have, their, they have their whip, maybe they have a couple of whips, uh, but they speak with many voices, but they vote as one. Now, the amendment proposed by Minister Howland contains a package of proposals which is far superior to the rather minuscule pro uh, set of proposals that we, we see in this particular motion. Now, it would be very interesting if the independents follow the own, their own statement and their own proposal and their, and their own motion here uh, take up their own advice where they state that the abolition of the political whip system um, to allow, and I quote, to allow individual members to vote according to their conscience and not by instruction. So I'd like to know are they actually going to practice what they preach and observe quite clearly that the, the, the package of proposals coming from the government is far superior to what they have tabled and therefore they should exercise their own individual conscience and support the, the government's amendment. That's the obvious thing to do if they're going to, to go ahead with um, the, the, the st their advice in relation to and admonishing us all in relation to voting by conscience. Um, but the extent, the, the extent of the reform proposals by the government are absolutely unprecedented. Um, the local government has been reformed, the role of the Oireachtas is going to be deepened and enhanced uh, with huge investigative powers uh, in terms of committees. There's a constitutional convention going to be held to consider wide-ranging political constitutional reforms. Uh, and of course, there is already uh, announced the 30% gender quota, which is to increase to 40% after the next election. And these will all radically reform the political system and, and deepen it. And this is the first programme of government that I understand in the history of the state that has made such a, such a comprehensive set of, of reforms. I want to speak for a moment, if I have, how much time have I got? Two minutes. In relation to an area that hasn't been mentioned yet at all, and that's the whole question of national parliaments and the European Union. Uh, now, Ireland's standing in the European Union has been diminished in recent years uh, with a negative knock-on effect on our political and economic well-being. Um, so the programme that we have here, uh, the programme for government, is the first one that contains a detailed set of proposals to transform our relationship with the European Union and how we will bring European matters into the heart of the Oireachtas proceedings. Firstly, EU policy and legislative proposals will be subject to proper scrutiny, which they haven't been done at the in the past. Each committee will share the burden of dealing with policies and proposals relevant to their remit. Secondly, legislation will no longer be processed on the nod through statutory instrument, as has been the custom in, pa in the past. Ministers will now be held accountable by their committees before they attend meetings in the European Union. Likewise, the Taoiseach will be obliged to come into the Dáil and brief the House before he heads off to the European Council meetings. That never happened in the past. He might have come in a week or two later and tell us what he was told by Germany or by France or whatever, uh, rather than coming in in advance. The important new role for Parliament in ensuring that the policies of the EU comply with the principle of subsidiarity will give the Iraq this a watchdog role as protector of the national interest in relation to all matters European. For the first time ever, 
the Oireachtas will be proactive and will put forward proposals for the draft annual work programme of the European Union Commission. And finally, the Oireachtas will link up with the offices of the European Commission and the European Parliament and will engage in a wide range of in-house and out-house outreach activities in communicating the European project to the Irish people. Proper engagement with Europe will enable Ireland to lead from the front instead of having to pick up the pieces when things go wrong. So, last can Corla, if the technical group had enough time to read the full comprehensive programme for reform, then I'm sure that I have no problem voting for the Government Amendment.